Across the watershed, planning and policies are often driven by predictions of how the land, water, and air will respond to changes in land use, climate, and pollutants. Scientists are able to make these predictions thanks to computer models, mathematical representations of complex real-world ecosystems. For the Choptank River on the Delmarva Peninsula, the model tells us that if we applied best management practices to reduce runoff, like stream buffers and cover crops, then nutrient pollution in the Choptank will go down. And so for decades, area farmers have been doing just that. But is it playing out as the model predicted? I met up with environmental scientist Kyoto Silifone on a rainy day when we could see the water running from the land right into the river, just upstream of Greensboro, Maryland. You've been studying this river for 10 years. Why? Well, so the Choptank River is one of the main tributaries flowing into the Chesapeake Bay. This area here, the headwaters of the Choptank River, it's been monitored by USGS since like the mid 60s. So it's got this very long, good record of nitrogen and phosphorus. So what you've seen and what you've been able to measure is essentially a gap between the modeling and the monitoring of what we've seen here. Yeah, so the Bay model considers all the best management practices that are being applied in, in the headwaters. And it suggests nitrogen and phosphorus are decreasing and have decreased since uh, 1985. But the monitoring tells a different story. Each month, the United States Geological Survey collects water samples at 123 non-tidal sites throughout the Chesapeake watershed, including here. They measure nutrient levels when it's calm and during storm flows. Since 1965, both nitrogen and phosphorus have been trending up at Greensboro. So why are we seeing increases in best management practices? And, and um, also seeing increases in the pollutants. Right. So with modeling, right now there's a lot of good data going into it, right? But there are also some assumptions. We assume that cover crops are very efficient in intercepting nitrogen. So right now, uh, we assume generally that there's about a 40% efficiency, that is, of the nitrogen being applied to the soil, cover crops are able to immobilize or retain like 40% of that, and the rest of it will, will pass through. But perhaps, Silifone says, they're not as efficient as the model assumes. Another consideration, the intensification of agriculture the poultry industry has grown exponentially over the years. And that industry produces, in addition to chickens, a lot of manure. Manure, exactly, and exactly. what's happening with that? So one of the BMPs for chicken manure is uh, manure management. And manure management is simply storing that manure until it can be safely applied. That's just being stored. It's eventually gonna be applied to the land. And the data does show the rate of application of manure N and P has increased. The amount of land in Greensboro, the amount of farmland hasn't increased that much. So you're simply applying more of that manure to a limited amount of farmland. And what is the increased amount and storage of that manure actually mean for this water that's flowing by us right here? So. Uh, higher levels of nitrogen right, and phosphorus will produce your algae. Right? And so if you have excess algae, eventually that algae will decay. And when that decays, it'll use up a lot of oxygen and you have low dissolved oxygen levels. No oxygen means fish kills. If we want to try to reduce nitrogen and phosphorus, we need to take an honest look at manure. So we need, a, we need to figure out a way to really manage manure if we want to, at least in Greensboro, reduce the amount of nitrogen and phosphorus we're seeing. What would that entail? If we're going to be, get serious about managing manure, we're going to shut the farms down? No, 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 you don't want to do that. So, um, so different ideas have been floated, right? Uh, manure transport you know, seems to be something that can be done. But farmers need that manure, right? Um, but there are areas of surplus, right? Greensboro could be an area of surplus, right? You can't just keep storing that manure forever. But there are also areas of deficit. Wouldn't it be great to have like a manure marketplace? There's definitely a demand. We just need that, that, that structure. What would that look like? 
Do you know? I do not know. No, this That's is, up to the economist. This is, uh, this is my wishful thinking. But other things that have um, you know, been thought about is there are BMPs that do work. So a lot of the farm fields here are ditched to lower that water table and have a relatively dry field. Well, those ditches act as conduits of nutrients, right? Well, during a rainstorm like this, right, that those ditches are gonna work really well. They're gonna make sure that water gets off that land as quick as possible. But if you install a weir, that is literally a little mini dam that we can actually remove and install, if you actually put that weir in and have that wall up during times like this, then you have less soil actually going onto the water. Wouldn't that be great? So it's almost like you need multiple BMPs like that to help during times like this. You can't just rely on you know, your cover crops. I have spoken to Maryland farmers who've talked about because of climate change and because of the different ways that rains are now falling, like we're seeing here, less slow soaking rains, more hard rains. Mm -hmm. But what does that mean for runoff when we have more big rains and we see changes like this? What are the implications for the runoff and the pollutants that are ending up in this water? Well, I mean, your management practices can't withstand that kind of intense storm flow and that repeated intense storm flow. So you're looking at management practices that are simply failing. So we've got higher storm flows, higher or more precipitation events. That's going to certainly lead to more sediment running off and that sediment is what's carrying your phosphorus and of course the, the nitrate within that, that water too will simply flow off into your, your waterway. So these mm -hmm. changes make this more complicated. Oh, of course. Yep, absolutely. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I want to come back one more time on the disparity between monitor between models and monitoring. Yes. What's the significance of this gap of this disparity? A lot of policies are based on what the model is showing. When farmers see that, they want to know that what they're doing to their farmland is actually improving. They're being told that. But when they see that, well, the Bay model said it was working, but what you're telling me is the water quality isn't responding. So what am I doing all this for? Right, I mean. Like this influences a lot of farmers and their they're just their thought process in terms of, is this, is this really working? So the cynics and, and the skeptics would say, we're going to all these efforts, we're spending all this money, we're doing all these things, and what your monitoring is showing in this water is it's not working, or at least it's not working to the level that the monitors predict. Right, it, it could be working. It's just, it may just be slowing down, right, the, the increase in nitrogen and phosphorus that you would actually, you may see a lot more of it had you not had any of that in the ground. But, but the model shows, hey, if you put this stuff in the ground, we're gonna see a, a sharp decline. We're not seeing a sharp decline. When we think about the disparity between modeling and monitoring, and thinking about the future of trying to get this cleanup back on track, uh, how do we incorporate this into that planning? Well, I guess we should, I wanna just clarify that the cleanup effort is, showing there are improvements. The goal of, like the, that water quality goal may still be you know, far from our reach, but I think overall we're trending in the right direction for the bay. Right? It's, it's little pockets like this where I think it shows us that we, we just have some more questions. We have some unknowns and we need to figure out what else do we need to do with this model or actually on the ground to move the needle in the right direction. Stream anytime, anywhere with the free PBS app.